Sam here from Sheridan Computers. So I want to talk about network booting devices, um, specifically PXE boot, um, which is pre-execution environment. So I recently went out to a company and they was uh, attempting to wipe hard drives for devices that they was going to donate the equipment for. Uh, they were booting off USB devices and booting each machine one by one and then starting the wipe process going, booting the next machine up off a USB stick and starting the wipe process going again. So I explained how to boot over the network just to make it a bit more efficient um, and that worked really well so I figured I'd do a video on how to do it. So what do I mean by network booting devices? Well, let me show you. So this is a demo machine that I've set up on XCPNG just to show you exactly what I mean. If you look at the boot settings, you can see that it's set to uh, network boot, the hard drive boot's turned off, and the DVD boot's turned off. So now if uh, we go ahead and power up this machine. As you can see, we start to boot. It's picked the uh, IP address up from DHCP, and we've gone straight into um, our boot server menu. So we've got a couple of options and it's down to yourself what you do here. You can put whatever utilities you want, installers. Um, so if we want to wipe hard drives, for example, we can go straight in and start wiping hard drives. Uh, we can do hardware tests, we can run mem test. Um, and it's just really useful to be able to do this without needing to uh, put things on a USB stick to boot off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, before I do, my company is available for hire. If you'd like to hire us, head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk. Click on the Hire Us button, fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for, and I'll get back to you with whether we are able to help. If you do like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. So the first thing that we're gonna need is a TFTP server. Uh, for this, I'm using um, pretty much fresh install of FreeBSD. You can use whatever operating system you're more comfortable with uh, as for hosting your TFTP server. Um, I'm using FreeBSD. If you haven't installed FreeBSD before or you want to know how to do it, um, I have done videos on how to install FreeBSD, so I'll leave a link at the end. But let's get started. So, package search TFTP. Um, now, I'm aware that FreeBSD does have a built-in uh, TFTP server, and I prefer to use um, the one from the packages, the TFTP HPA. It's got extra options, it's a bit more secure, and I've had better results with it at serving large files. So uh, let's go ahead and install that. Okay, it's installed, so we need to tell it to um, start on system startup. So I'm gonna so you can edit your rc.conf. Um, I'll just do it this way. Uh, TFTPD uh, flags equals. So I want minus p for permissive mode. Uh, minus S for the secure option, which basically CH roots into the um, directory. Um, and then we want the path where it is. So it's going to be user, and I'm going to put it in TFTP boot. Uh, and I'm going to set the byte size to 1468. Um, it, by default, I believe it comes to uh, comes at 512. So 1468. Um, basically matches the MTU on your network. So 1468 and then I'm going to put IPv4 because I want it to run in IPv4 only. So that should be that sorted. Um, and just to check what you needed to do. We've basically just added these two lines to the rc.com file. So tftpd underscore enables equals yes, tftpd flags minus p for permissive minus s for secure user tftp boot uh, and then we're setting the byte size with uh, 
hyphen capital B 1468 and then we set it to IPv4. So let's go ahead and create the directory. So make user TRTB boot. Now I'm going to set up a symbolic link for this um, just to make things a bit easier. So now if we um, go into our tf 2 boot directory, it's empty. Uh, I'm going to create a file, uh, sam.txt, hello world. So we'll write that and then we're going to start the service. Let's get it the right way around. So now it started. Um, so in order to test this, so we can run sock stat uh, grep TFTP, and you can see that it certainly is listening. So we can test that from a command line. Um, if I do curl minus o sam.txt uh, tftp 10.1.10.248.115, sorry, forward slash sam.txt. So you can see that um, we've downloaded the file. So TFTP is working. Um, once you've got that from this stage, it's pretty easy to configure. Let me get rid of that. So for booting the system, we're going to be using uh, syslinux. So uh, go to kernel.org and you can grab it from here. Uh, get the HTTP one. Uh, it's in Linux, Utils, Boot, SysLinux. Um, and the one I'm going to grab is the latest one. So we've got SysLinux 6.03. Let me just go and copy that. Um, just, uh, right. So I'm going to w get not, not install so we need told you it was a fresh install of FreeBSD so we're going to need w get which is fine so now download syslinux which we've got um, so I'm going to make uh, syslinux cd syslinux and then I want to unzip Probably not installed. Oh, yeah, it is. So unzip, and then I'm gonna unzip that. So we have the syslinux uh, extracted to a temporary directory. Um, so from this point, there's some files that we now need to copy into our tftp boot directory. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make the uh, TFTP boot uh, BIOS. Uh, this is the directory structure I'm going to use. You can use boot. You can copy the directory straight into the root directory of the TFTP boot. Um, I recommend doing it this way because we have, we have them set up for UEFI as a different boot structure, for example. So let's do that and then let's copy some files across. So we need temp, sys, Linux. Uh, BIOS core and I want PXE Linux.0. Let me just make this a bit bigger. To TFTP boot BIOS and I want uh, LPXE. Um, and I'm going to do. Uh, BIOS GPXE 
So I'll leave a link to um, this list of files that you need to install to do this. Um, these are various options. The PXE Linux is the uh, Pixie boot for Linux, which causes it to boot. Uh, the one with the L prefix before it uh, allows you to use HTTP instead of TFTP for downloading files. Uh, GPX is an old one, which I just have there for um, if we should need it. But I'll leave the uh, full list of files that you need below. So if we now do copy temp, I want syslinux, BIOS, uh, comfort2, we need LD Linux. I'm going to copy that to TFTP boot BIOS. Um, in addition to that, I'll just uh, want nibutil, nibutil.c32. Um, com32 gplib. Uh, GPL web web GPL dot C thirty two um uh, modules PXE chan we want the menu uh, so visa menu Visa menu is the high resolution menu. Uh, our menu is a standard one, so we'll copy both of them across. Um, it's C menu, lib menu, lib menu dot C thirty two. Um, don't chain chain dot C thirty two. Um, lib libcom thirty two. Let's see thirty two. Uh, I've done lib menu, done menu, and there's a couple of additional uh, items that I'm going to copy across. They're not actually required, but they're just useful to have. So if we do com thirty two uh, modules. Reboot. Uh, power off. And then uh, HDT dot C thirty two. Sums up text. So these are the files that we have in there: Chain C32, LD Linux C32, Lib Menu Menu, um, Pixie Linux, G Pixie Linux, uh, Libcom32, Lib Util Power Off Reboot, HDT, Lib GPL, um, the LPXE Linux, the Pixie Channel, and Visa Menu. So HDT is a hardware diagnostics. Um, tool um, reboot obviously reboots computer and power off shuts it down so they're kind of handy ones to have um, I've just copied them in so I can demonstrate the menu here as well um, right so in there we need to create a file called pxlinux.config um, so this the um, Pixel Linux is where our boot menu is going to sit. Um, so let's go ahead and create that. So create the file called default. Um, so we need to set up our menu. So uh, you know, de default. Menu C thirty two, so they can use menu or Visa menu. Visa menu is like the high res one. Um, personal preference, what you use. 
I'll go through them if there's any interest in this, then um, I'll go through on further customising the menu and adding extra options to certain things. This is literally just a, an introductory video. So I want to set the uh, timeout, I'm going to set to zero. Uh, prompt zero. So the timeout is basically um, the timeout before the default option is selected. Um, prompt is set to one um, to automatically choose the default option. So I want that as zero. Um, so now we can start putting some options in here. So I'm going to label reboot. And this is going to be kernel reboot.c32. So this is the um, optional files that we've just copied across. Let label power off uh, kernel power off dot c32 and then let label hardware detection tool and we're going to do kernel hardware detection tool dot c32. So that's a very basic menu. Um, so we should be good at that stage. Let's uh, go ahead and test it. So let's uh, configure options. And you want option 66. Which we're going to set to the IP address of the server, which is 115. Now, this option 67 boot file name is you actually expressing what boot. So, our boot file name is going to be forward slash uh, BIOS, because that's the folder I put it in. And it's on Pixie Linux dot zero. So, that's our full boot string. Now, this is why I separated, uh, put it in BIOS, because uh, EFI ones have a different. Um, boot files, so you can use EFI example for them. So if I go ahead and apply that, we should now be good. So if we uh, boot this again, As you can see, now there's the menu. Um, so we can go ahead and reboot the system. Uh, we can power off, or we can run the hardware detection tool. So going in. Um, I'm going to memory, see how many slots you've got, etc. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a lot that you can expand on. Um, I don't know if there's any more interest and in whether people are actually going to be interested in me doing more videos on this. Um, one of the uses we have for it is um, we have it in the tech department and we use it for uh, booting machines over the network and wiping the hard drives. Um, as I say, I'm not sure if people find this useful or not, uh, but if you do, please hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to see more videos on um, network booting, then um, yeah, just let me know. I'll see you in the next video.